everyone, Sam McIve from Enterprise DNA here. I just want to do a very quick review of a new technique, new development concept that I've been working on around uh, uh, reporting templates. And in this case, I'm going to re quickly review a financial reporting template uh, demonstration or demo that I ran through at a recent uh, scenario method event. These are member only events and uh, it was a full uh, hour and a quarter, I think almost an hour and a half session where we went through from start to finish how do you actually create financial reports. Um, but I want to do a bit of a breakout session here where I just want to show you the core of the technique because what you might be able to do is uh, see how you could apply some custom table reporting to your own environments just by seeing how the actual table is created or how you actually format a unique template into a table. Now, just as a bit of an aside before before we jump into it, the scenario method workshops, you can actually find these at Enterprise DNA Online, uh, Enterprise DNA, DNA Online is portal dot enterprise dna dot co so these are the member only events you can access all of the stuff if you uh, if you get if you want to upgrade to membership but um this this is it here so it was, it was actually an hour and a half hour and a half session that we ran through um in and uh, recently now let's uh let's just go over the key part here so you see here that when you create tables inside of power bi they format as per say um, you can't so you can't design them in a way you can't format them in a way that is customized you just have to uh, use the default uh, order or sequential order that they that power bi generates within the table and that can be determined by say a value it can be determined by alphabetical order um, you know sort ascending or descending etc but you can't like how you want inside of financial reports is have a uh, unique have a unique template design. So if I just, just do a quick drill in here, right? You'll see here that what I've done is I've created subtotals. So financial reporting is a perfect example of this, but it's not just financial reporting. There is lots of custom templates or custom tables that you might wanna create across a wide variety of um, pieces of information. You might want like a summary table of your key metrics, right? Well, in the past, this was very difficult to do if you wanted to go and grab specific measures out of uh, different measures and integrate them into one report and put them one on top of the other. It's very hard to do. But with this templ templating idea, you can do that. Now, within this, what I've done is I've broken it down by revenue. I've also thrown in total co uh, cost of goods sold. And then I've broken it down even more. And this is where the true customization comes in. I've left a space in the table. Then I've had total gross profit. And then you'll see here that I'm integrating a percentage uh, uh, with, um, with dollar amounts as well. And so this is, again, where the customization really comes to the fore. And you can't actually do this if you just drag and drop into a table. Okay, so the key of this breakout section is, is how do you do this table? Now, to actually get to this point requires a lot of reconfiguring in the background or how do we, you know, in terms of the model that we create and how do we go grab revenues and costs and integrate them into one. So that was what that, that was a big part of what the, um, the scenario method session was all about was how do you actually do that and then work your way up to this. But then how do we actually template things up? Now, the first thing we need to do is we need to actually create the template. Okay, and so what you need is you need a unique table that looks somewhat like this. Okay, and the key when looking at this is you can customize this however you like. Okay, what I have done in this case is I have put a small indentation in say the subtotals that I wanted. You could, for example, put those in a different column, um, or you could have these indented in a different way. Uh, maybe you want to have these indented uh, and this one flush against the, um, this, the, the left hand side. So totally depends how you want to customize it. But this is how I've done it in this particular case. This is my template, but then you also need a normalized column as well. And what this normalized column enables you to do is this is where we're going to go and run logic through. We're going we're gonna to try and identify which line we are on in our custom template based on this normalized column, okay? Because you don't want to be, you, depending on your customization, you don't want your, uh, your, your table 
column or the, the, the column you're going to put inside your table. You don't want to be running logic against that in a lot of cases. I believe this is from just from doing a number of these. You want to actually do them against a simple normalized column because then you don't have to be concerned about all the you know spaces or indentations etc in your template. Okay, so you first of all have to set this up, but then you need to then you need to find a way to integrate it, right? And that's where the model in this particular case comes in key. Now, certainly, I don't have enough time to describe how every individual element comes here. That's what that um, you know ninety minute session was. But the idea though is that we need to integrate this into our table. And so right down the bottom here, I've got financials financial template. You'll see here. And what I did was I put that put that particular templated column into this table and then via formula so via formula I um, I implemented I try I worked out at every single row I tried to identify okay well what row am I on am I on the distributor row the export row the wholesale row and then what I did is I integrate I went and found that calculation and integrated it into the table right and then I did the same for, say, the subtotals or any of these individual totals. I actually uh, went and found the individual result, which, is, which was calculated in another measure, and I integrated it into this. Now, the way I did that, we're we'll, we'll going to have a look at the end measure. It's, it's, it's got a little bit to it. Um, so well, let's have a look at, uh, say, it started with the annual totals. But the what I did, and this is, this is the key part here, is I created a switch. I used switch true. And I said, okay, well, if I'm on the total revenues column, I want this calculation. If I'm on the total cost of goods sold uh, row, sorry, row, I mean, then I want this this one, and so on and so forth. And that's how, and you'll see your total gross profit. I actually wrapped that inside a format um, and was able to put a percentage on it, etc. Okay, now this is the key, is the switch true element to this. That's how you enable that's how you allocate certain results to certain rows in the table the final piece of the puzzle here that i want to cover is this row index you need this row index okay you need this because you need to somehow be able to sort your template in the table okay if you don't have this then there's no way for power be able to get confused and it won't actually sort in a unique way and check out how you can actually hide it and how I've hidden it here. So you can't actually see it in the table, right? But it is actually there. So if I just drill in here, check this out. What I've done is right in this corner, I actually have the row index. And I'm able to sort one, two, three, four, five. And that's how I get the exact templated setup as, as I want. And that's how you create your reporting templates. Okay, so that was, a, that was a cool little breakout session. Hopefully you got a bit of it out of this one. If you do want to download this particular uh, particular resource you, you, resource, you can actually, within the scenario method, uh, workshops um, workshops uh, module at Enterprise DNA online, certainly check out membership if, um, if you want to do that because you can access far more, um, not only this, but far, far more as well. Okay, hopefully you like that one. Hopefully you got a lot of out of um, you know, how you can, the, the idea, the concept. You know, I've been really working on this a lot and I think there's a lot of applications across so many different scenarios for it. So hopefully you can identify some of those. Okay, certainly throw the video a like if, uh, if you got a lot out of it and um, don't forget to subscribe to Enterprise DNA TV. Plenty of great content coming out, coming out to you. Okay, all best.